Cloning Cloning refers to the creation of genetically identical copies of an organism. Cloning can occur naturally as in the case of bacteria which produce genetically identical offspring through asexual reproduction or it can occur artificially. There are three types of artificial cloning, gene cloning, therapeutic cloning, and reproductive cloning. Gene cloning, also called molecular cloning, refers to the cloning of genes, which means producing copies of genes or segments of DNA. First, the DNA segment that is to be cloned, the target DNA, is isolated. This is done by the restriction enzyme digestion, or PCR, in which restriction endonucleases cut the DNA at specific sites called restriction sites. This produces sticky or blunt ends. In the next process called ligation, the complementary sticky ends help insert the restriction fragment to the plasmid vector. Blunt end ligation is possible as well. This results in the formation of recombinant DNA molecule. Through the next process of transformation, the recombinant DNA molecule is inserted into a bacterial cell and these transformed cells are then cultured. The process of transformation is not always successful, so restriction fragment analysis or PCR followed by gel electrophoresis and or DNA sequence analysis can be used to confirm if cloning was successful. The second type of artificial cloning called therapeutic cloning, sometimes called the somatic cell nuclear transfer, refers to the production of embryonic stem cells that can potentially be used to create tissues that can replace injured tissue. Embryonic stem cells, which are derived from the innermost cells of the human embryo, are undifferentiated cells, meaning they can divide and differentiate to acquire a permanent function and become a particular type of cell in the body. The third type of artificial cloning, called reproductive cloning, refers to the cloning of entire organisms. In this type of cloning, researchers isolate a mature somatic cell like skin cell from the animal that is to be cloned. The DNA from this cell is then transferred to an egg cell, which has had its nucleus removed. The addition of the genetic material from the somatic cell to the egg cell without the nucleus can be done in two ways. First way is to use a needle to remove the nucleus from the somatic cell and then inject that to the egg cell or the oocyte without nucleus. The second way is to fuse the whole mature somatic cell with the egg without nucleus using electric current. Following this, the egg develops into an early stage of an embryo and is then implanted in an adult female's womb in both the processes. Eventually, the female gives birth to an organism that has the same genetic material as the animal who provided the somatic cell, and this young one is called a clone. Reproductive cloning may also need a surrogate mother to allow the development of cloned embryo and this was the case with Dolly the sheep, the most famous cloned organism. Over these years, many cloning experiments have been conducted by scientists using different cloning techniques. The first genetically identical mice were produced in 1979. Following this, clones of cows, chickens and sheep have been produced by transferring the nucleus of a cell from embryo to an egg which has had its nucleus removed. In 1996, we achieved a major breakthrough when the first mammal was successfully cloned from a mature somatic cell. After more than 250 attempts, Dolly was finally produced by Scottish researchers from the cell of a six-year-old sheep. Following this, two years later, eight cows were cloned from one cow by Japanese researchers. However, only four of the clones survived. In addition to sheep and cattle, other mammals that have been cloned include horse, rabbit, deer, ox, cat, rat, dog, and mule. Dolly was not the first mammal to be cloned, but it was special because it was developed from specialized adult cell. It proved that copies can be created from specialized mature cells as well. This breakthrough paved the way for many more biological and medical opportunities as it changed the notion of possibilities. It was followed by the development of iPS cells, induced pluripotent stem cells, which are derived from specialized cells such as blood cell or skin cells, that are genetically reprogrammed into pluripotent cells that can be differentiated to any type of cell. Did you know not all clones look identical? Clones have identical genetic material, but their physical characteristics can be different depending on the environmental factors. 
stay tuned for the upcoming videos about exciting applications and potential drawbacks of cloning and learn about human cloning. Until then, watch my last video on the origin of quarantine, bubonic plaque to COVID-19, and quarantine today. On an extremely important note, we stand by Black Lives Matter.